Daniel's going to fill this slot pretty full, so we, sh we should get started. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Daniel Escuero. And uh, he, he is a typographer, type designer, educator, and, but uh, today <laughs> uh, he, is, he is going to talk about some graphic design aspects of uh, playing with type. Sure. This is going to be good. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so as, as I said, uh, it's a funny thing. I'm, oh, I'm just going to go through this because I'll get there in a second. So I'm Daniel Escudel, and I'm a graphic designer and creative director from Brazil. And then the funny thing is I'm not really a type designer. So for this event, I'm like, you know, trying to avoid talking to as much people as possible because then people who ask me about type design will be like, whoa, I'm not a type So I do, I do, I love design, like drawing type and letters. I'm just not, you know, that's, I, I don't, my, my main gig is not designing full typeface, which is a pity. I'd love to. Maybe someday I'll get started on it. Uh, and you guys probably know, at least most people will, uh, probably know me from this, which is the splash screen from Illustrator. Um, and it's basically, why the hell is there a giant letter in Illustrator? Why am I seeing this? Uh, actually, there is a, a very funny comment from someone on, Beha on the Behance project of this page, which was basically just really trashing it and, and going like, why the hell is, am I seeing a giant yellow K? I mean, this guy could have done anything for Illustrator and he, he did this just because it's yellow and they okayed it. It was a very funny, con I, I tried to look it up again for this, but she had already deleted it, unfortunately. So, um, but basically I wanna kind of step back a bit because uh, I'd love to share a bit of like the process of the influences that kind of builds up on my style, so to speak. So be, um, back in late like 2018, uh, I was working at Tacho, with, uh, which is a design company from Brazil, from Rio and Sao Paulo. And we've had the chance of working uh, in designing the, the, uh, a new brand, a new logo for the institute of this guy, who is Roberto Burle Marx, who is a very uh, famous Brazilian modern uh, landscape architect, which is he, his main gig was designing spaces and gardens and working with biology and plants, in, but also with architecture and, and design. And there's him just chatting with Le Corbusier at his house. Uh, <laughs> and, and the guy was also a pain, uh, the, the thing about him, well, first is that this is a kind of project that really rarely comes by on, like an, uh, on a you know, um, capitalist office because it's, it, it, was, it was actually a pro bono gig. And, but it was huge in terms of culture for us. So this guy had a, a, a ridiculously vast uh, body of work, which really went through painting and, and not just you know, his garden designs, but also just painting and sculpture and so many, so many different things. And he had a very specific uh, aesthetic, a very specific language. And one thing that also happened during the project is that I, I live in Rio de Janeiro. I was born in the neighbor city of Niterói, which I'll also show a bit, but uh, I live in Rio. And so much of his stuff, his work, was actually designed uh, for public spaces in Rio, like the Copacabana. The, the, the little waves there are the most famous part of the sidewalk, but then the entire uh, kilometer, like, I don't know, maybe three kilometer long beach has these non-repeating uh, patterns which he designed himself, and so many other things. So uh, the, the project was really interesting in terms of kind of really just getting to, to, to see these things in these spaces as something that was actually designed by this guy, by Roberto Burlemax, and also studying his, his, uh, his aesthetic, his trace. Uh, this is, you know, public spaces, public places that we as Cariocas, as people from Rio, use all the time. If it's the weekend, we're, there's lots of people there. It's like the parks that you guys have here. Well, it's also a park. This one, it's, it's pretty uh, huge. Uh, this is Carnival, so millions of people uh, just occupying the space that this guy uh, designed. This is the, the university that I studied design at. And it's also, the, the, the landscape uh, architecture was also designed by him. So it, it was kind of crazy to kind of see 
how, how many of the spaces that I even personally frequented uh, were actually designed by him, and, and I didn't even know. Uh, and it was very enriching to also study his, his kind of, his aesthetic, right? And then try to, get try to narrow it down to, to a logo, which was the, the, the main project, but then it expanded into just a, a full custom typeface. So I did say I'm not really a type designer, but this is the only ty actual type design project that I've done from start to finish with the help of Lucas Azevedo, who is a, a great friend of mine, and he did the type engineering. So that's kind of, that, that's, my, my, that's the kind of thing that I, that I would get into trouble, just you know, making the entire font actually work as a, as a software. But uh, I did design the, the, the letters, I did draw them. Uh, so this was the logo, this was uh, the typeface, and we see like, the idea was to really uh, incorporate his, his kind of, the, the, the organicity of his work, not just with the plants, but also his designs. Uh, in general. So, and the reason why I'm bringing this, it has kind of little to do with the actual, the illustrator splash screen or even the, the entire 3D inflated type kind of uh, current trend. But to me, this is really, this really helped shape kind of my style after this was kind of a, 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 a breakthrough in terms, not a breakthrough, but this was kind of a divisor of before and after because I was so, so very much into it when this project came along and I, I, I studied his, his work so much that it really you know, helped kind of shape the way I, I, I think about shapes and, and, and really curves and, and, and uh, aesthetic a little bit. So it's, it's funny because it kind of rubbed off on me and it's still, <laughs> it's still there. Uh, and then skipping a little bit uh, to 36 Days of Type, which is also part of why is that giant yellow K in Illustrator. And I know for you guys, for this crowd, this probably looked like just a bunch of people playing uh, make-believe of being type designers for a month <laughs> without any care whatsoever for the craft of actually developing a typeface. And that is exactly right. Uh, and this was, this was the project that I did in, for 2021. So it was really just all over the place, but I mean, the, it, you, you still can kind of see some uh, like um, an identity, uh, uh, something that kind of connects these as a thread. But the idea was to really just have fun with it and just, you know, go crazy. But that, and then that was 2021. I mean, 2022 was kind of a slowish year. Not too much, but it was a little slow. I mean, I, had, I did have a little time on my hands. I was like, so I, I want to do it again because it's really tiresome. I know, I know to you guys that's Comic-Con, but I mean, it, it, it is more tiresome than it looks because you really have to design and had to post every day and then sometimes you just don't have the letter and then you have to, oh my God, I had to design something new. And then the, the competition is kind of crazy so you don't just want to post whatever. Uh, so it kind of it really uh, messes with it. So these were kind of early drafts of what I you know, was thinking of doing. I want to do something with motion, with movement. And uh, I was liking these experiments in, in just uh, lines and the ways that these could you know, move as if they were, uh, you know, as variable fonts, but not not actually being variable fonts, just there for really for the experiment, for the movement. Uh, oh, sorry. These were uh, these were also kind of some places uh, I, I had been playing with vast, uh, great differences in in, in contrast and, and weight, uh, so reversed to regular contrast, very heavy, very heavy letters, uh, like like so some some many of them had like their own little identities or identifying traits, but they were a little bit all over the place. There was these guys here too. They all kind of you can trace some of them back to the Bulle Max kind of overall aesthetic a bit. Uh, there was these crazy animal experiments, which were a lot more work than they should be. And it was just, uh, I don't know, it was very hard to kind of uh, ex expand this style into the full uh, 36 uh, letters. Like the G there, I had to just flip it to just make it look like, almost look like an animal and that, you know, I shouldn't be able to do that. Um, and then there was a time like February 14, I didn't even remember this, but I just, you know, checked it that I happened to, to catch this on Instagram, which was like uh, this uh, Nubia Navarro, which is Nubikini, which is a, basically a design superhero from Colombia. She, you guys should really check her out. 
uh, her work is really amazing. She did the ch the cha cha chi. Is it cha cha chi? Cha chi. Yeah. I also I always call confound mix the the, the order chi cha cha with uh, the cha cha chi identity for uh, for the tax directors club. Um, and then she posted this, you know, very quick um, tutorial. It wasn't even a tutorial, just a, a quick video showing the new 3D tool from, from Illustrator. And I was like, what? That Illustrator 3D does this now? It does this kind of stuff? And she was like, yeah. I was like, nice. I, I want to maybe check that out. And that was three weeks before the actual start of the 36 Days of Time. And again, I know this is not a, a commercial project. It's not, nobody had a gun to my head. It was like... Man, I would love to love to maybe use this in, in, in this project because it's just so fun to, to be able. But the timing was very kind of short before that because I, I, I also had other projects, you know, going on. Um, so I kind of started just playing with it. And these are the very first uh, experiments. I didn't even know something I told you guys in the workshop that you had to, you know, you had to render after you... You start doing the 3D, it's not rendering, and then you have to actually render. I didn't even know that at the time. So the, I thought this was it. This was the 3D, and this is the unrendered uh, version. And I was already pretty baffled by it. I was like, wow, this is really cool. This is amazing. I, I had never even seen these uh, anywhere. So it, I really kind of, I had the luck of kind of go, getting into it at the very beginning, because Illustrator had, had just launched it. It, I didn't even see it anywhere other than that the Nubia Navarro uh, story. And the funny thing is that this also kind of speaks to me to a different, uh, to a different kind of um, um, origin, not origin, a different kind of, uh, uh, I forgot the word, but let's say it's origin, uh, which is the, this very uh, special, space-like, spatial, Brazilian modern architecture. And this is the work of uh, Oscar Niemeyer, who is a Brazilian also modern architect, from the same kind of period that Bulle Marx was. And this, was, this is a museum, a modern art museum in my city. This is the city that I actually uh, grew up in. And I, I, I even saw the construction of the museum as, as, I was growing up, as I was growing up. I was like 13 or 14 at the time, I don't remember. But, but this was kind of a, 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 an important, you know, part also of my subconscious um, aesthetic, kind of uh, the way I, I, I also used to, to see things. And this is Brasilia, which is also an, an entire uh, town that this guy designed by himself. So th there are many, there are many kind of spatial aspects of Brazilian modernism that kind of. Uh, were there for me in the back of my head, you know. I was like playing with this, and I loved how these they looked very uh, uh, architectural. And I never did architecture. My my father is an architect, and so I, I kind of grew up around this kind of uh, scenario as well. He, but he was very uh, a very old school architect with the, with the rulers and the compasses and, and and all that. So this is very uh, interesting to me too, in terms of the the spaceness and the, 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 the volume. So this is, uh, I was very also pretty attached to the unrendered version of these in the beginnings, which was in my head the way that, that this worked. So the, f the first letters that I, that I actually produced with this were, they looked like these unrendered, very, very basic versions of what you can do in a, you know, inflated 3D space. And they started to become a little bit more complex uh, over time. So this, is, uh, this was an, a letter H, which basically is something also that I discovered during the process, which is this very weird, strange shape, uh, rotated and then rotated again. And then I went into, wow, I, I'd, love, I'd like it to, to move, you know. But this is Illustrator. I, you know, I can't animate anything in this. But nonetheless, I did animate it. I, I did do this little thing which took a lot of work by hand, hand positioning the, the axis, the, the X axis, uh, in terms of considering the, 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 the acceleration of that. So it's not just plus one, plus one, plus one. It's, it's, it's kind of a, a, on a slope to accelerate like that. So this is a very ridiculous way of animating anything nowadays because it's 2023 now and nobody should do this, but I did this. <laughs> Because just because I wanted to do this in Illustrator, I was like, wow, the results from Illustrator are okay. And I didn't have time or even, you know, mostly time to just go to a different 3D program and just learn something, how to animate it. That. So I, 
many things were done here in terms of what can I do right now and then just, just get over with it and then uh, later someday I'll learn proper 3D. Uh, I haven't yet, but uh, I, I still want to. <laughs> so these are also kind of the experiments uh, with the line that I, okay, how, how can these work in 3D? So again, this, this entire series were, oh, this M was also something that, again, nobody should do this. I, I wouldn't want to do this anymore, but this was also hand, hand position, like four, I had four different documents with uh, each with the, with, with each with each, uh, you know, uh, tumbling, yeah. And so I was just really having fun with it, and then when I got to this letter, letter P, this was kind of a moment that it kind of went viral, uh, and people really seemed to take on it. I think it, it you know, the thing starts showing up on Instagram uh, uh, search pages, not search, uh, the, what's, what's the, yeah, yeah, the, like the discovery pages, and then it really, you know, went off the chart. This is, I think, my, my most liked post by far that I had. And it was kind of, I, I traced this point, the beginning of the, the trend, which I don't even like to call it. <laughs> I hate to call it. <laughs> Apparently, it, it has become a little bit of a trend, especially after the Illustrator spl splash uh, screen. But this is the origins for me, because when I put that little plastic thing, man, uh, and made it look like an arm floaty thing, then it, it, it just became something else. It's, it wasn't just a 3D letter, it was a letter that people, non-designer or non-type designer people, uh, recognized as something that, that was familiar to them. This is an arm floaty, I can't I can understand this. Uh, so these are, uh, I had a lot of fun doing these. People think that I, that I sculpted the entire thing in 3D, including the plastic thing, which is not the case at all. This is just a, an image, uh, you know, cut out in Photoshop and, and adjusted to, to, to merge seamlessly with the, with the actual 3D letter. Um, so again, I, I'm really lazy in general. It's not like I'm, wow, this guy learned 3D better than any human. No, not at all. I mean, this is credits 99.9% .9 to what Illustrator made, uh, made able for someone like me to do at that point. Uh, and also, I was just having fun doing, I, I mean, th this entire thing was, there were so many possibilities to do so many different things just with the basic 3D tool or 3D inflate, or, or not even just the inflate, but the 3D tool in general. So this is just a lot of Photoshop on top of just some regular renders. And oh, I'm, I'm speaking so much, I'm, I'm tired of my own voice, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but the, this was the actual, the, the, the series. I mean, mostly each of these letters have kind of their own, um, their own variation sometimes. So if you guys, whenever, if you want to go over to Instagram, there's many of them have lots of kind of variations between themselves. And it's funny to look back now and see that it, it, it still kind of carries some uh, of the aesthetics of that thing that I, that I, you know, that I put so much time and, 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 and effort and energy in during the Bullet Max project, and it still kind of lingers, you know. It's very funny because I'm not thinking about it, but it, it, it's just there. So it's, it's funny. I like to kind of merge these two projects together because it's, you know, I can always kind of trace back some things and, and still see. And it led to so many interesting projects after that. Uh, what time is it now? Do we have time? Is it? Yeah? Okay. Uh, Great. So it led to many interesting projects. This, is, this was a poster for um, a half marathon in Gothenburg. So this guy just came up to me from Sweden and was like, you want to design a poster for, a poster for us? We love your, the, the, your inflated letters that look like, like an arm float. And I was like, okay, but how, is, does that relate to the, to the event in any way? <laughs> no. I was like, okay, let's do it then. So, <laughs> so that was it. That was the brief. Uh, the, I kind of, you know, came to a to a text that said something like, you know, the the, the joy of summer and the way that, that we feel in, in that you know in that warm weather reminds me of childhood. But I mean, the the actual brief was let's make some fun letter letter G because it's Gothenburg, uh, and it was great because the letter. The, the lowercase g is actually such a delicious letter to work with, so I was, I was happy, mostly because of this detail specific. If it was like the letter T, maybe I wouldn't even have taken the job. So it's, it was fortunate that it was called Gothenburg. 
uh, and th with the detail that the little uh, label there actually said, uh, they, they input actual info data from the actual runners, and then they sold uh, customized posters to each runner who wanted to, to purchase one of them. And then, you know, out of the blue, I get this email from Adobe, and I was like, uh, hi, we like your work. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, showcase your work regarding the Adobe Creative Cloud product startup screens. And at that time, I didn't even understand that, that it was what it, it later I, I, I found, out, found out to be, but I was like, well, cool, finally, you know, Adobe, you know, I've been, uh, you know, so, so involved with, the, with their own new 3D tool. It, it's cool that they, that they noticed, and it's cool that they came talking to me. But then I was like, this was really mind-blowing to understand that they were actually calling me to design the screen for Illustrator, which is something that, you know, it, it, that, that's a program that I use the most since ever, since uh, graduating or whatever. And these guys approached me to, to design a letter for, and, and that was it. The brief was a letter, just like the Gotham. They they really wanted just a cool, fun-looking letter. It was even they didn't even want a, a specific letter. They, they just wanted a random, whatever letter. And I was like, it's funny. I was talking to my dad about this job, and he was like, "Oh, cool. So you're doing the the letter A for for Illustrator?" I'm like, "No, no, I'm not doing." And he's like, "What?" what? No, but they they actually they don't want the letter A because they don't want it to to look like a logo. And it was like. But what letter are you going to draw? And I was like, I don't know. And he was like, Well, draw the letter A then. Was, no, I did they do <laughs> so, so it was very it was kind of a weird process because I mean I was basically I had any letter that I that I could, although some wouldn't work for some weird reasons, like the letter X, for example, it, it would look like it's Illustrator 10, perhaps, so it, it would be weird. So some letters would maybe be weird, but mostly not. So it was a, a, a fun, very open brief. Uh, and it was such a joy to, you know, explore so many different uh, things. There was a different file as well, uh, uh, other than this one. And also, many different projects kind of uh, stemmed from here and came after this one, which were things that I, that I drew in this uh, stage that kind of became other things after this project uh, was done. This was uh, actually very close to making it. This was our choice. For maybe two months, when I, I had already finished, I had you know been paid and but nobody we weren't even talking anymore. And then uh, this was this had been our choice. And two three months later, he comes when when it was approaching the time to actually launch it, and it's like oh we were just watching again. And then we we're really maybe a little more inclined to letter K. Would you be okay with it? And then like of course. So so it's it's also a funny story because all, it was almost like the letter this N here which I thought it was fun for two reasons. One, it's, it's a very Latin glyph, uh, the N tilde. It's, it's used in, in Spanish. <clears throat> it, it's, it's actually not used in Portuguese, which is my language, but it's, it's Latin, you know, you can understand that it's a Latin character. It's a Latin uh, glyph. So I thought it was interesting because I was a Brazilian doing the, the, the screen. And then also in Portuguese specifically, if you just use this character, you, that's basically a short for no. So just saying no. So I, I thought it would be a little funny for Brazilians to, you know, get getting on Illustrator and then having this no. It, it, it was kind of an inside joke for Brazilians, maybe. Uh, but I'm really happy that it, that it turned out to be the K. I'm really, I really like it now. The, the more I look at it, I, I actually don't look at it that often because I, I tend to kind of run Illustrator for weeks at a time. Sometimes I, I'll force myself to quit it just to, just to see it again to feel that oh, nice, it's still there. Um, and it kind of, uh, so this was another project for Adobe, and the person who approached me apparently didn't even know that it was already, you know, being, being um, commissioned for, for the, the splash screen because it hadn't been launched yet. This was right before the launch. And she was like, oh, yeah, so who talked to you and said the name of the guy? And apparently it's someone who across rooms from her, and she didn't know. She was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll ask him. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, he said he knows you. And so, so it was very funny, too. Uh, almost at the same time, a few months later. And this is uh, um, just a tutorial, really, for how to, which is something that people ask me all the time. It's kind of funny because I tend to, I'm not crazy about the idea of just publishing tons of tutorials for everything. So I, 
I kind of, you know, stayed away from it a bit. You know, people were like, oh, can you post a tutorial? And I was like, I will, you know, sometime. It also, it's a little work to do a good tutorial. And I was like, yes, maybe I'll get to it someday. But then Adobe, you know, approached me. I was like, okay, maybe now it's time to, to make a tutorial for these people. So it was, a, it was a very fun process to, to make a tutorial. This is the beginning of a typeface that I'd love to develop one day into maybe a full-blown, very display-looking like uh, typeface. Uh, in, in 3D. Uh, uh, up until now, I only have less than half of them, just regular, normal char characters in Latin. But I mean, it's, I really like it. I, I hope to maybe one day take time to, to finish it. Uh, other interesting projects like these political uh, posters using 3D to oust the far right from our country. <laughs> And uh, these are really just, just fun experiments uh, during the, the, the pre-voting uh, uh, time in Brazil. Uh, in, this was actually the second, the second um, turn. Second turn turnaround. Yeah, the second turnaround. Um, but it was just really a fun process. And this is, I guess, this is the, lay, uh, the last uh, commercial project that I did using this, uh, this this 3D, the, the Inflate 3D, which also I tend to kind of, uh, I don't want to just take anything that comes in requesting for a commercial job with this because I don't want it to, to just lose, you know, impact so much. It has already lost a little, but I, 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 I kind of, I, I took a little care into not just doing anything, so I, I, I wanted to take things, uh, projects that, that requested for this kind of, uh, uh, of this kind of, um, you know, solution uh, that I really wanted to, to undertake. So this is the, 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 the a logo which changes for each um, public, um, publishing date for the Los Angeles Time image. Uh, it's a lifestyle magazine. And also with, and the brief for this uh, actually said that she wanted, the, the creative director, she wanted it to, to reference retrofuturism and early space travel, which was delicious for me because it speaks very, very much closely to all of those references that I, that I brought here, Bulle Max in a strange way, but also uh, Nehemiah and modern architecture uh, and other things too. So here I look, I, I like that you can see a little bit of Ziraldo, which all Brazilians will know is a huge uh, reference for us in terms of illustration and just graphic design and graphic work in general. Uh, also, the, the Bunemax type and the, the architecture and some of the experiments. So I, I like to look at it now and see that it's really a kind of a mix of so many different uh, personal references that again end up being just thrown around my work all the time. So I think it's it's interesting to kind of let this style develop and really you know um, work it and and build it because it's it really sets you apart in the end. Uh, this was the very last letter I, I, I drew like this for, I posted it for 36 days of type, but it, I'm not posting the, the, the series, the very, very few and far in between letters. Uh, and this is actually the, a letter that Nina and Rafa from uh, 36 days of type uh, uh, called me to, to design for each, each day, each letter they have this, um, a person, a designer that they actually uh, call to design something. Uh, so this was the letter Q that I did, it also kind of looks like the, the key from Bulle Max, although it didn't have to. And it's funny because this guy showed up saying oh. that if you rotate it, you'll see a squid word, Quincy Tentacles. And it did, it did not disappoint. <laughs> it, really, it really does. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. I, hope, I hope I've not, I haven't spoken for too long. Well, you know, we started a few minutes late. We ran a few minutes over, but it's it's break time. So uh, we got time for questions if you want, or you can just go grab your coffee. Okay. You stunned them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're speechless. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay, we'll get one in. Hey Daniel, firstly that was a fantastic presentation. I'm glad I'm not in the main auditorium and I'm here, so it's, <laughs> that was really cool to see. Have you heard of the Color V1 font format by any chance? Uh, sorry? 
There's a font format called uh, Color V1, which allows you to do gradients and whatnot. So your forms that you're showing here may potentially be able to be turned into a proper working typeface. Yeah, I've heard that uh, people from Plow, which is a Brazilian um, foundry, actually came up to me and, and you know they, they they wanted to make try to make it into a color font, mm. and I, I it's something that <laughs> that I'd love to do in the future, but yeah. the, but there's still so much work to do in terms of actually designing the letters, but I'd yeah. love to. But also I would think maybe it wouldn't work, I mean, it, it wouldn't be 3D anymore, right? It would be just a, a finished, like an image. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that could, that could work, work too, and then you could switch colors maybe. That would be a fun thing to, to do, to develop the typeface. And I'll look into it the day I come a, a little closer to finishing it. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, man. Guys, yeah. thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Daniel. <laughs>